quarigons over the hammer pulse when there will be a uh, too low diastolic pressure when there will be high systolic pressure and that, uh, that may be important uh, in understanding again the pattern of ejection of the blood from the left ventricle but when we talk about right side so the heart uh, we need to pay attention to happen to uh, jugular veins mm, normally we have uh, some certain waves uh, in, in the heart, uh, in the jugular venous pulse that will represent uh, um, emptying of uh, right atrium, uh, a contraction of the right ventricle, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, definitely they will change in patients with uh, pulmonic hypertension. It will be just just increase uh, in pressure in the right cavities of the heart. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the the emptying of the right of the right atrium will give much more prominent A wave. Uh, uh, same may happen in patients with tricuspid stenosis. Uh, uh, or if we talk about patient with the um, connection of the right ventricle to right atrium with tricuspid regurgitation, uh, in that case, uh, there will be a significant well, elevation, significant widening of uh, uh, V wave that will present a contraction of uh, ventricles. Anyhow, uh, first we need to discuss what will be the, the, the basic significance of uh, uh, sub waves in jugular venous pulse. Well, uh, actually, we need to start maybe with uh, a contraction of atria that, that, that will give us the, the A wave. Uh, at the uh, very end of ventricular diastole, there will be contraction of atria, and contraction of right uh, uh, right atrium will give significant rise of pressure in jugular vein. Now, that will be the, the first in that subset. A component uh, A uh, wave uh, in jugular venous pulse. Uh, after contraction, atria will relax uh, and uh, that will give significant, well, very prominent downslope uh, during the ventricular filling, during the relaxation of atrium. Mm, uh, there will be decrease uh, uh, in pressure in superior vena cava. Uh, there will be decrease uh, uh, in the pressure in the uh, uh, jugular vein, and uh, uh, there'll be down slope that will be called actually uh, X descent. On that uh, X descent, mm, uh, uh, along with uh, uh, well, ongoing feeling of uh, uh, right atrium, uh, there may be some uh, uh, small positive wave. That means that at that moment of time, uh, there was contraction, uh, onset of contraction of the right ventricle. Um, the shutting of the uh, tricuspid valve uh, will result, uh, result in some uh, kind of the, the block of the outflow of blood towards the heart, uh, some kind of well, well, uh, very short transient to rest of the flow, and uh, that will result in small, very tiny positive C wave. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, V wave. Uh, uh, that is uh, the, the tense atrium. Uh, uh, atrium is, is full. Mm, Tricuspid valve is, is closed, and uh, um, contraction of uh, ventricles and the emptying of ventricles uh, uh, into pulmonic artery may give uh, uh, some positive elevation of pressure that will be the V wave. Uh, wide descent uh, uh, is a, a passive uh, feeling of uh, uh, right ventricle. And just about opening after relaxation, uh, after well, end of uh, ventricular systole, uh, opening of, of tricuspid valve, passive flow of blood from right uh, atrium and from jugular vein, mm, uh, again towards the heart, towards right ventricle, uh, that will result in decrease in blood pressure, wide descent. Uh, and then again, uh, uh, when right atrium will contract, that will result in elevation of pressure. Mm, uh, blood will not uh, uh, not flow anymore towards right atrium. The pressure will rise. Uh, therefore, uh, in different uh, um, uh, issues uh, associated mostly to affection of the tricuspid valve, there will be different change in uh, um, in those waves. So, if we talk about a large A wave, a wave that is associated to arrest of uh, flow 
from uh, jugular from superior vena cava to right atrium. A uh, high, a large R wave uh, is associated mostly to tricuspid stenosis. Mm, uh, a very potent, uh, uh, hypertrophed, sometimes dilated right atrium. Mm, uh, high pressure in the cavity of right atrium will result in increase in, in the wave associated to atrial contraction. Uh, definitely, same may happen without tricuspid stenosis in patients with just high pressure in right cavity of the heart. That may be in pulmonic hypertension, may be most common situation uh, uh, in which there will be secondary changes in uh, the function of both pulmonic and tricuspid valve. Or what may happen uh, significantly more rarely, uh, pulmonic stenosis. Uh, anyhow, again, there will be some kind of issues related to function of the right atrium because there will be too high pressure in the cavity of right ventricle, in the cavity of right atrium. And in that case, there may be increase in the amplitude of our wave, our A wave. Uh, Canon wave uh, um, is just a well, manifestation of um, uh, some uh, discoordination of contraction of uh, atria uh, and the ventricles. And typically, it's attributed to markers of arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, when there will be coincidence of contraction of atria and ventricle. Uh, uh, in patients with complete uh, heart block, again, uh, where there will be desynchronization of atrial activity and ventricular activity, mm, uh, there will be a uh, well, um, synchronous contraction of both right atrium and right ventricle. There may be cannon wave, ventricular pacing, uh, there may be ventricular tachycardia. So that may be the situation when right atrium will contract against closed due to ventricular systole tricuspid valve. Um, a steep uh, uh, X and Y descents may be seen in patients with the blocked outflow, the, the constant uh, block of uh, blood flow uh, towards the heart. That may be seen most in pericardial disease. Presence of either uh, effusion uh, in pericardial cavity like cardiac tamponade uh, uh, when the blood cannot normally well, uh, flow towards right atrium. Or a similar mechanism may develop in the case of sclerosis and fibrosis of, of uh, um, pericardium, patients with constrictive pericarditis. Uh, elevation of B uh, uh, wave or sometimes uh, merging of C and B waves in one large C plus B wave uh, uh, that will represent a ventricular systole C uh, component is on set of ventricular systole. Uh, the, the, the climax of ventricular contraction is a B wave. Uh, so sometimes it's impossible to differentiate and uh, that will be called CV wave. Mm, uh, that definitely will be the marker over the situation when there will be actually no functional uh, valve in between ventricle and atrium. And uh, the blood pressure will be directly conducted from right ventricle to right atrium uh, to all great veins of greater circular circulation. Mm, that definitely will be the landmark of the marker of tricuspid regurgitation. Um, for now, who can tell me, uh, how would you describe that from the point of view of just well, regular physical examination? If you not just well, pay attention to all the sow waves that in many cases will require the, the flabography, the graphical recording of, of the, the venous pulse, if we just will look at the patient and see uh, how uh, jugular veins are pulsating. Mm, Tricuspid regurgitation, presence of the merged C and V wave, how will be manifested uh, at uh, a just a routine physical exam? Anybody? Well, anybody is listening to me? Gabriel, Amanda? Amina? Uh, there would be uh, extra pulsation on the jugular. Thing. What kind of? If you'll try to correspond that to another obvious pulsation, the pulsation of carotid artery. So that will be the carotid artery, and uh, uh, that will be the jugular vein. Mm, uh, how jugular vein will pulsate in relation to carotid pulse?
Well, actually, the, the, there are two, uh, well, or oh, maybe three basic uh, variants. Um, there will be, for Jaglovin, synchronous pulsation. Uh, uh, there will be asynchronous pulsation when there will be, well, uh, uh, pulsation in counterphase that is positive, negative, or just, well, uh, absence of any pulsation. So which of three, well, uh, option one, option two, uh, or option three, uh, will be typically seen in patients with tricuspid regurgitation. Well, any ideas? Otman? Uh, asynchronous. Gabriel? Sorry? Asynchronous? Uh, actually not. Uh, no, asynchronous is normal pulse, or pulse in actually a patient with at least uh, normally functionable tricuspid valve. Uh, if function of tricuspid valve will be compromised, uh, in that case, uh, there will be synchronous emptying of uh, uh, both ventricles. Um, in aorta, pulmonic artery, and right ventricle will also uh, will, will um, uh, empty itself into, well, backwards, into right atrium, and therefore there will be positive uh, uh, at the same time as wave in carotid artery, positive wave in jugular vein. Therefore, intracuspid regurgitation, that uh, um, wave that you call CV wave, uh, will be manifested as positive jugular venous pulse. And uh, again, talking about, well, um, let me erase that. Uh, talking about um, tamponade, talking about issues with the, well, negative waves with descents. If patient will have constrictive pericarditis, if patient will have some kind of, well, fortunately mild uh, cardiac tamponade, there may be a rise uh, of jugular venous pressure on or inspiration, something opposite to, uh, in, in contrast to that which should happen normally. And we'll call that Kussmaul sign. In contrast to, well, normal situation where there should be decrease uh, of jugular venous pressure uh, uh, on inspiration, if patient will have um, block of blood outflow, that the uh, breathing in will result in even more severe block, and in that case, uh, jugular venous pressure will increase. That's called Kussmaul sign. Good. Well, uh, now it's time to proceed to uh, tricuspid valvular heart diseases uh, themselves, and we need to start with definitely etiology. Uh, first disease may be most common of all. Uh, that we need uh, to talk about right now uh, will be uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, and definitely it will be logical to start with uh, some anatomical anomalies, mm -hmm. and of them uh, much more common in contrast to all others will be the rheumatic etiology of valvular uh, uh, heart disease. Again, the question to everybody, how do we diagnose the rheumatic etiology? What should be the clinical signs indicating that patients have rheumatic fever? What will be the lab tests for that? I will discuss that uh, at least twice when we're talking about mitral diseases, when we're talking about aortic diseases. So, um, uh, uh, which clinical signs, clinical, uh, and which lab tests uh, uh, will be the markers that patient may have rheumatic etiology of tricuspid affection? and tricuspid disease. Again, don't forget that it's it's not lecture. Uh, we're talking about, well, uh, something that we already discussed and uh, you are uh, uh, on the seminar. See that almost none of you will switch on your cameras. So I wonder, where are you? Yes, Gabriel? Oh, well, then so. So Maya, good. The rheumatic diseases, um, they affect mostly the joints, Good. but also the tendons. Which joints? Um, like, for example, the knee joints. Yes, so large joints. Yes, the large Like knee, joints. ankle joints, elbow joints, maybe wrist joints. Good. And uh, sometimes also the tendons, as I remember, and the ligament. Uh, typically, that will be migratory um, arthritis, me meaning that uh, the affection will migrate from one joint to another, 
and uh, there will be no affection of the solid tissues. So there will be only defiguration, no deformity, no destruction of bone uh, uh, and cartilage. Good. So maybe the most common clinical sign. Good, Amina. Professor. Your hand, yes. Uh, sometimes I think there's a situation with the lupus. Uh, lupus? Yeah, well, uh, there, some patients have lupus. There's something. There's a uh, uh, deficiency with the with the heart uh, muscles. Um, my, maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about it. But is it or not? Well, formally yes, but uh, point is uh, that uh, um, lupus is uh, first on one hand uh, is another connective tissue disorder. Uh, as well as rheumatic fever. Second, it's again uh, an autoimmune disorder, but it's different from rheumatic fever. So, for instance, patients with uh, lupus with uh, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, will not have affection of large joints, uh, will not have migratory arthritis, will not have affection of the skin, mm, like erythema nullaris, they will not have typical affection of nervous tissue in children. Um, uh, uh, it's a different disease, first. Second, it's much more rare uh, from the point of view of valvular involvement in comparison to uh, rheumatic fever, mm, uh, no matter which valve we are discussing. Uh, whether it's mitral, aortic, maybe aortic, maybe it's somewhat more frequent than others for lupus. Uh, uh, definitely for tr tricuspid. Uh, for most of heart valves, rheumatic fever, that is definitely connective tissue, autoimmune, but another disease would be more common there than others. For instance, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, mm, uh, uh, they, are, they are independent and different entities. Good. Maybe uh, we can find some skin nodules. Uh, yes. Um, typically, it will be a function of skin itself, not subcutaneous nodules. Um, uh, but again, a function of joints will be more common. Now we need to discuss what will happen to uh, lab tests, the patient's serology. Mm, what you need to test for if you suspect, uh, well, I don't think that you have to discuss rheumatoid arthritis and uh, lupus, uh, because we're not talking about them uh, in our classes, but definitely we discuss the markers of rheumatic fever. What that? There should be some kind of, well, uh, auto antibodies, but which of them? Maybe swallowing. Maybe swallowing of uh, of what? Um, the, um, the body, I think, uh, the hands, maybe, or uh, what about lab tests? Something in the serum. So, point is, for instance, your patients have not a function of large joints, but small joints, and it may be uh, a rheumatoid arthritis and classical situation, or it may be some kind of non-typical rheumatic arthritis. Again, two autoimmune connective tissue diseases. Uh, uh, how to decide? We need to test well uh, patient serology to decide what's present. So if it would be a uh, rheumatic um, arthritis, then which uh, uh, order, uh, order antibodies should be present in patient's blood? Please remember, uh, what should be the provoking factor for uh, rheumatic fever? So, uh, which disease should precede development of rheumatic fever itself? What should be before rheumatic fever? And sometimes what may be the provoking factor of relapse of rheumatic fever? Uh, the class uh, devoted to mitral diseases <coughs> showed to you uh, the classical cause of disease, uh, uh, what actually uh, should be the background stage, the, 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 the something um, uh, well, uh, that will predispose patient to uh, that type of autoimmunity. No, it is. Uh, that should be a streptococcal infection, and therefore uh, uh, there should be the uh, cross-reactive autoantibodies, uh, uh, antibodies uh, against streptococcal antigens that may cross-react to patients' connective tissue. That will be, for instance, anti-streptolysin O, uh, uh, anti-hyaluronidase, uh, uh, anti-streptokinase, like that. 
Well, uh, sometimes um, rarely, but again, we were discussing that uh, in our class devoted to aortic disease. Mm, a patient may have a function of tricuspid valve that will be again very untypical, but may happen uh, uh, by infective uh, process, uh, directly by some infection, maybe again streptococci, but in that case, not through autoantibodies, but um, the, the bacteria should settle on the valve. And uh, who can tell me? Uh, in which category of patients uh, could expect that mechanism of tricuspid disease, of tricuspid uh, incompetence, tricuspid regurgitation. Silence. Gabriel? Lucas? Otman? Nobody. Pity. Well, uh, infection should be drawn through the, the um, veins, uh, typically superficial veins, or maybe great veins or greater circular circulation. And definitely uh, for uh, spread of infection from there, there should be infection in of veins um, uh, that will drain themselves into, uh, uh, into right ventricle and right atrium. Uh, that should be either what happens rarely a thrombophlebitis of the lower extremities, patient's feet, or uh, there should be infection in of superficial veins uh, uh, due to constant uh, trauma by injections. It should be um, intravenous drug uh, addicts, or it may be uh, some intravenous central catheters that may be installed in a patient, for instance, received chemotherapy or some, some other severe patients. Good. Uh, Epstein, and normally I'll show it to you a bit later. It's inborn, it's, it's some malformation of the tricuspid valve. Uh, sometimes there may be a function of the connective tissue uh, that may result uh, uh, in the floppy tricuspid valve, that will be the, the uh, variant of um, prolapse. There may be some other non Epstein uh, uh, congenital um, issues uh, that will affect tricuspid valve, sometimes result in both at the same time, um, well, stenosis of the ostium and incompetence of the valve. I think uh, in much more details, you'll talk about well, carcinoid uh, tumors uh, in the later years, and the fourth, maybe even the fifth year, when you'll talk about uh, endocrine neoplasia, uh, uh, near endocrine tumors that may affect pancreas, it may affect well, any actually portion of the gut. Uh, sometimes they may be located somewhere else, like uh, urinary bladder, kidneys, ureters. Um, uh, carcinoid tumors may produce well, different hormones, but may be most well known. And uh, the, the marker of specific uh, carcinoids uh, is over secretion of serotonin. Serotonin, uh, if it will be delivered to right cavities of the heart, will result in stenosis of pulmonary artery. And as a complication of that, a uh, patient may develop tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, sometimes, in the similar way as for mitral uh, regurgitation, patient may develop tricuspid incompetence due to affection of the um, papillary muscles. Uh, sometimes it may be uh, the trauma that will affect mostly um, uh, cords. Uh, uh, connective tissue cords uh, that will attach uh, um, uh, the, the, the free edge of the tricuspid valve to papillary muscles. Mm, it may be specifically uh, disorders uh, um, associated to Marfan syndrome. Patient again mostly will have a function of uh, left-sided heart valves like aortic, uh, mitral valve. Um, the same will happen to tricuspid valve, but manifestations will develop much more rarely just because pressure in right sides uh, of the heart is significantly lower than in the left. A uh, patient may have a function of the cusp itself, uh, themselves, uh, due to rheumatoid arthritis, or it may be sclerosing, uh, sclerosing of cusp, sclerosing of papillary muscles, of cords, um, corded endemia, uh, due to radiation, and again, in that case, patient may have both stenosis stenosis of the ostium and incompetence uh, of the valve. Uh, another much more important um, may be the development of so-called functional regurgitation, function from the, from the point of view that uh, tricuspid valve itself will be anatomically normal. 
Uh, that may happen in patients with uh, elevation of blood pressure in the right side of the heart. Uh, maybe most common uh, will be a function uh, due to pulmonic hypertension, the patient will have uh, pulmonary disease, or if patient will have pulmonic hypertension due to left-sided heart disease, like mitral valve heart diseases. Uh, it may be right ventricular dysfunction in patients with the diffuse cardiomyopathies, or some rare cases when a left ventricular infarction will involve also right ventricle. It happens rarely, but that is possible. So, um, secondary or functional uh, tricuspid regurgitation is a regurgitation without eight, any identifiable structural damage of tricuspid valve leaflets or corda tendinia of tricuspid valve. And please pay attention that that is 80% of cases of, well, clinically significant, clinically overdose tricuspid regurgitation. So, that's definitely the most important mechanism of, uh, um, well, affection of the tricuspid valve. Uh, the mechanisms, um, definitely the most common, most classical, uh, will be just, well, dilation of the uh, annulus, uh, annulus fibrosis of tricuspid valve due to uh, right ventricular hypertrophy, uh, due to right ventricular dilation. It may involve, may not, dilation of the right atrium along with ventricle. Uh, in that case, uh, the, 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 there will be lack of leaflet deposition, so the normal leaflets will be not enough to cover the, the orifice of the tricuspid valve. Uh, um, there may be increased tricuspid uh, leaflet th uh, tethering uh, in relation to right ventricular pressure uh, or right ventricular volume or both. Again, uh, that situation may develop in pulmonic hypertension. And uh, there may be distortion of the right ventricular shape, papillary muscles, in the case of right ventricular infarction, or it may be them, some intrinsic uh, disease of the right ventricle, like uh, um, right ventricular fibrosis. So, um, uh, um, I think we will we'll mention several times uh, today that the Epstein anomaly, um, that's anomaly is important from the point of view of assessment of the anatomical changes that may result in tricuspid uh, incompetence, tricuspid stenosis, but it's not maybe the most common uh, situation. In that case, uh, there will be issues in formation uh, of the septal leaflet of tricuspid valve. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, some other issues, some other malformations also may develop. Uh, the anterior, uh, superficial, uh, uh, yes, anterior superior uh, leaflet of uh, tricuspid valve may be affected as well. It may become well. Uh, well a very thin, like a curtain. It will not hold the pressure in the inside the right ventricle. Uh, there may be also uh, well changes associated to the right ventricle itself. It may be too thin. Mm, there may be uh, changes uh, uh, in the, the annulus of fibrosis uh, of uh, tricuspid valve. But most important will be the affection of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. It's called well, bubble-like formation due to impaired uh, uh, elimination of the valve. And uh, talking about functional, uh, functional uh, tricuspid regurgitation, it may be associated to uh, some inborn changes, so some kind of um, uh, cardio, um, myocardial dystrophies that may affect uh, myocardium, uh, dilational uh, dystrophy, or when there will be dilatation of the right ventricle along with left one. Or sometimes it may be associated to fibrosis, or fibrosis of endocardium uh, or subendocardial fibrosis. In that case, typically a patient will develop regurgitation and uh, very rarely fibrosis. Or some kind of well, uh, uh, increased elasticity or softening of tricuspid valve may happen uh, that will be manifested by tricuspid valve prolapse. Uh, in some cases, it will be just prolapse without significant regurgitation, just uh, well, systolic click that may be heard uh, over the base of tracus or um, uh, xiphoid process over uh, the classical point, typical point of auscultation of tracus with valve. Mm, uh, sometimes uh, uh, there will be significant murmur, murmur of tracus with regurgitation. So please pay attention to some uh, bubbling of well, uh, cusps of tracus with valve.
Uh, definitely in uh, um, severe uh, cases, we need to uh, decide what to do what's happening in patient's heart. Uh, we need to differentiate isolated uh, tricuspid pulmonical or heart disease from combined affection of, uh, let's say, mitral uh, and tricuspid valve you know, by cardiac catheterization. That's important, uh, first of all, from the point of view of uh, planning of the surgery. And uh, I told you that uh, from the point of view of assessment of the jugular venous pulse in a patient, they will have uh, some uh, um, positive uh, uh, um, elevation of pressure, deletion of jugular vein, uh, uh, deletion that will coincide to systole uh, uh, of ventricles to carotid uh, artery pulse. It will happen just about right after ventricular complex. And please pay attention to what will happen uh, inside right atrium. Just well, same as in jugular vein, there will be a well, so called well, uh, tall or exaggerated well, prominent V, well, uh, v wave uh, just at the moment of ventricular systole. Uh, uh, after ventricular complex, this NG will get well, tall positive V wave, and uh, it will be at the same time when uh, right ventricular tracing, right ventricular well pressure measurement, uh, will record again, uh, well, a tall uh, uh, ventricular wave, elevation of uh, pressure during systole ventricles. And at the same time, there may be issues with uh, relaxation of ventricles because ventricles will receive blood uh, uh, well, in an extreme amount. A uh, normal amount of blood that will be returned from greater circular circulation um, that will be added by some uh, blood that was uh, well uh, returned uh, from ventricle into right atrium. Good. If there are any questions, you may well uh, raise your hand or switch on your, your microphone and ask me. So elevation of right atrial pressure uh, and uh, um, uh, elevation of end diastolic right ventricular pressure would mean that both the right atrium and the uh, uh, right ventricle are overloaded by blood. There is too much of blood uh, uh, in both the right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, how can we diagnose um, uh, tricuspid agitation? Uh, that can be done, uh, well, first, uh, by some, some verification uh, that your patient is having some uh, issues in the less circular circulation. Um, it may be, well, pulmonary rails uh, indicating that patients have a congestion in the, in the lesser circle due to some, some background pulmonary disease or due to mitral or aortic or heart disease. Um, therefore, sometimes affection of the tricuspid valve may be diagnosed indirectly uh, through the presence of left ventricle dysfunction, through the presence of a left atrial disease like mitral stenosis. That may be uh, very important from the point of view of proving that patients have a functional um, tricuspid disease, tricuspid, for instance, incompetence, or uh, through presence of some, uh, well, again, well, uh, marker disease. Um, if uh, you think that your patient will have well, combined rheumatic affection of both um, uh, well, mitral and uh, uh, tricuspid valve, in that case, presence of mitral stenosis will be very important uh, because almost always rheumatic fever will result in mitral stenosis. And uh, in significantly lesser percentage, there'll be affection of other valves like aortic or tricuspid or pulmonic valves. Uh, then, uh, don't forget that affection of tricuspid valve, tricuspid agitation, will result in significant overload of greater circular circulation. And therefore, uh, what important will be to prove that your patient is having uh, some signs of fluid retention in the greater circle. Uh, that may be, for instance, so-called dependent, or it's called sometimes peripheral edema. It will be a presence or accumulation of fluid in serous cavities, maybe most important, most common, or those will be the presence of ascites, accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. But it may be along with that uh, fluid in pleural cavity, hydrothorax, or it may be hydropericardium sometimes uh, resulting in additional um, uh, physical changes like uh, signs of cardiac tamponade. 
sometimes Asarius, and we'll talk about that later in the second semester when we we'll talk about portal hypertension, may result in nausea, and sometimes flatulence, sometimes issues with absorption. Again, sometimes it may be earlier signs, patient may have no uh, issues, no symptoms uh, like dependent edema, or may pay no, no attention to that. It may look for medical aid due to presence of nausea uh, or severe flatulence. Uh, please pay attention that uh, um, we talk about disease that will limit uh, output of right ventricle into the lesser circle and from the lesser circle into uh, uh, left side of the heart. And therefore, your patient will have diminished peripheral uh, uh, radial pulse or well, some other pulses mm -hmm. due to secondary lack of blood uh, uh, in uh, uh, left cages of the heart. Uh, tricuspid, um, tricuspid valve will result in affection of uh, a sinus node, and that will be the mechanism of very common atrial fibrillation in those patients. Very important. I told you that uh, mitral disease, mitral stenosis, mitral uh, incompetence will result in that, but it will be through affection of, uh, of the right atrium, mostly through uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, please remember that uh, we're talking about patient, uh, let me draw, well, uh, the right side of the heart, that will be the right uh, pulmonic artery, uh, right ventricle, right atrium, and the blood is flowing back uh, in the systole from right ventricle, not only to pulmonic artery, but both back to right atrium. And uh, uh, from there, there may be some kind of regurgitant jet to all great veins of greater circular circulation. Due to that, you may feel that uh, a thrill, that regurgitant jet, the turbulence, um, uh, at least uh, over the jugular veins. So sometimes you may feel the systolic thrill over jugular vein, uh, at least in severe tricuspid regurgitation, to be the nice proof that your patient is having uh, a backflow of blood from the right ventricle to right atrium. Yes, we decided uh, for jugular venous pressure, it will be, uh, well, first of all, generally elevated. And again, it will be important to measure the jugular venous pressure uh, um, by physical methods, like while well, using two rulers. Mm, and from the point of view of assessment of the phlebogram, uh, assessment of the waves and the jugular vein, this should be prominent systolic V or CV wave. And um, uh, well, after that, there will be very rapid, very short descent, sharp, wide descent. Uh, then uh, uh, let's think what will happen, what should happen uh, to right ventricle. Our right ventricle uh, is overloaded, it's volume overload. And uh, due to that, there will be right ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular impulse. By the way, who can tell me uh, where it should be felt? What is a, a normal location? Where should we look for a pulsation associated to the right ventricle? Gabriel, Samaya, or well, anybody? I'm afraid that most of my students are lost somewhere. Don't know where are you? Are you treating coronavirus in your countries? Uh, or you're well, well, uh, just resting, or you fell asleep because it's too boring. Well, uh, any ideas? Uh, professor, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, the question is where to look for. Uh, I decided that it should be right ventricular hypertrophy, and this should be definitely exaggerated right ventricular impulse. But where is it? Which uh, well, pulsation of the precordial area um, uh, should be right ventricular? Because maybe pulsation due to well, great arteries like aorta, like, like pulmonic artery, due to that ventricle. Uh, which pulsation uh, is due to right ventricle? Amina? No ideas. PT. Uh, right ventricle is the anterior surface of the heart, and therefore right ventricular impulse is uh, a pulsation that should be felt uh, just by the edges, just by the sides of the sternum. 
if there is no significant dilation of the right ventricle, may be felt mostly just right uh, uh, by the left edge of the sternum. Uh, the more right ventricle is dilated along with hypertrophy, uh, the more it will be shifted rightwards by the uh, right edge of the sternum. Uh, good. Um, sometimes maybe pulsation of the pulmonary artery that may be felt, that may be the parastinal heave, and sometimes may even feel the loud uh, um, pulmonic uh, second heart sound. Uh, and again, that will be a question to you, what is the standard location for auscultation, or sometimes in uh, that case, for instance, or the palpation of the pulmonic artery. Where should we, well, for instance, auscultate pulmonic artery? What is the classical point for that? Gabriel, Lucas. I have no idea. I will try to remember uh, what are the standard auscultation points. Uh, how pulmonic artery is going away from the heart uh, uh, in which direction. Mm -hmm. You see, even if you have no idea, uh, uh, um, you may just well try to imagine, well, that is the, the right atrium, right ventricle, and the uh, right ventricle ejects the blood, well, somewhere leftwards. Well, that is the direction of ejection of the blood from right ventricle up and uh, leftwards. And therefore, if we talk about the classical auscultation points, the standard point for auscultation of the uh, pulmonic artery and its valve mm, uh, will be the uh, second mm, uh, right interspace. As for a uh, uh, sorry, second left interspace, definitely second left. Uh, uh, if for uh, aorta is uh, second right, for um, pulmonic artery is second left interspace. Uh, good. Uh, there will be a pan-historic memory, memory of tricuspid regurgitation that we'll discuss later. Mm, uh, and again, uh, talking about what will happen uh, in the greater circular circulation, about fluid retention, uh, besides peripheral edema, besides accumulation of fluid uh, in serous cavities, there will be definitely accumulation of fluid in all parenchymatous organs. Most obvious, um, well, the largest of them, uh, will be the liver, and therefore you'll feel first enlarged liver because it will be enlarged very significantly and quite rapidly. Mm, uh, any rapid stretching of liver capsule will result uh, in tender liver. Sometimes it will be symptoms, sometimes signs if you we'll try to, to touch it. Mm, uh, and again, uh, due to backflow of blood, the pressure in uh, uh, the right ventricle will be conducted throughout all great veins in the greater circular circulation, including inferior vena cava, including hepatic veins, and therefore liver will be pulsatile. That is another source for development of um, the pulsation in epigastric area, that is the enlarged and pulsatile liver intracuspid regurgitation. Well, and now let's again turn back to uh, jugular venous pulse. Again, that is, uh, well, the red one is a normal recording of the uh, normal pulse, that is the contraction of uh, uh, atrium. Atria, well, uh, definitely, well, uh, right atrium. C wave, the onset of uh, ventricular systole. Mm, slight elevation of pressure, uh, uh, atrium is filled, and that is uh, the X descent. Mm, uh, and uh, that is uh, the, the uh, uh, um, uh, contraction of ventricles that will be emptied, uh, the last portion of blood, into the um, pulmonic artery. So everything from C uh, to V is uh, the time of uh, um, uh, right ventricular systole. And uh, uh, in regurgitation, in the case of mild regurgitation, we'll be still be able to see um, uh, the onset of ventricular systole as independent C wave. Uh, there will be just well, increase enhancement of the V wave. Um, but if there will be severe regurgitation, well, uh, everything that will be related to ventricular systole, starting from the very start up to end, uh, will be merged. And therefore, C and V waves will be merged, and there will be one joint well, a positive wave uh, that will be visible after A wave, after um, the atrial contraction. Again, if patient is not having atrial fibrillation, if yes, 
means that the patient will have no atrial systole. Uh, there will be no airway uh, at the phlebogram, and the patient will have just well one huge, very, very high and wide positive wave that will be the V wave. And after that, after um, uh, emptying the ventricles, definitely there will be a very rapid drop of pressure that will be the Y wave. Good. Now for uh, auscultation of the heart. Mm, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we need to decide uh, uh, what we're talking about, whether, whether we're talking about a uh, patient with isolated uh, tricuspid regurgitation or regurgitation in the background of some pulmonic issues. From the point of view of propedeutics, uh, definitely it would be correct if we talk about, well, just pure regurgitation. But unfortunately, uh, from the clinical point of view, almost never happens uh, in almost all of our patients. There will be uh, some kind of background pulmonic hypertension that will result in definitely accentuation of uh, uh, second heart sound in the over pulmonic artery over the second left uh, in the space. Uh, sometimes there will be, uh, besides accentuation, also splitting uh, of uh, the, the second heart sound due to some uh, quite significant delay of the shutting of the pulmonic valve. Well, uh, uh, in the case of absence of pulmonic hypertension, the pulmonic component of second heart sound will be normal. Um, the murmur uh, uh, that patient will have uh, typically will be of low pitch, mm, uh, better heard uh, uh, by stethoscope, and will be shot. So memory may be limited only to the first half of the system. Uh, second point, um, we're talking about patient with overload of the right ventricle. And therefore, in some patients, uh, even without any right ventricular failure, just due to volume overload, as happened, for instance, in mitral regurgitation, patient will have a third heart sound right from the start. Uh, third heart sound, in that case, will be the marker of well, too much blood that will be received uh, uh, by the right ventricle. Uh, but definitely in patients with a right ventricular failure, with exhausted right ventricle, uh, there will be a much more well, obvious uh, third heart sound. Uh, if your patient will have uh, um, normal contraction of the uh, right atrium, there will be also fourth heart sound. The patient may have sometimes uh, both third and fourth heart sound gallop. Uh, definitely, I don't think that uh, it's necessary to ask about that. Uh, the basic uh, maneuver that, that will result in um, well, uh, overload of right uh, side uh, valves, right cavities of the heart, uh, will be the inspiration. If you wish to do something well, well bad um, at the right side of the heart, Definitely in patient without cardiac tamponade, uh, ask patient to breathe in, and that will result in inflow significantly higher volume of blood uh, to the right side of the heart. Uh, that will result in uh, uh, more obvious, for instance, gallop rhythm, more obvious uh, murmur uh, uh, of tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, if it will be uh, uh, not classical regurgitation with destruction of um, the cusp of tricuspid valve, it will be just well, tricuspid valve prolapse. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, memory will be late systolic. And typically, it will be uh, after mid systolic click. It will be a very sharp, typically high pitch sound in the middle of the systole, uh, uh, systolic click. And uh, there will be no memory before that. Memory will develop only after systolic click. Uh, talking about murmur, uh, typically if you talk about classical regurgitation, uh, uh, the murmur will be pan-systolic. Uh, the classical location of the murmur may be uh, uh, in the fourth intercostal space by the uh, left side of the sternum. Uh, so it means that murmur uh, may be mostly heard over tricuspid valve itself, somewhat higher from the void area. And in many cases, it will rather radiate towards a xiphoid area, towards the classical location of, of uh, the classical point of tricuspid valve. Mm, but the point of maximal intensity will be the fourth intercostal space by the left. 
uh, quality of the MMO will be typically uh, relatively well, um, soft, blowing, and high pitched. Density uh, will increase uh, uh, with uh, inspiration. You may also increase intensity of the MMO with exercise. Uh, if your patient will raise his or her legs, again, there will be increased inflow of the blood uh, towards the right side of the heart. Uh, uh, or another maneuver that, that, that you can do is uh, to compress the liver. You'll push well, more blood away from the liver, more blood will be delivered uh, to the heart, and uh, that will result in uh, augmentation, augmentation of the systolic murmur. Uh, in advanced stage uh, of severe regurgitation, um, sometimes uh, there may be absent uh, of the obvious uh, murmur, uh, because of ventriculization of the right atrium. It means uh, that there will be no obvious um, well, um, tricuspid valve and right atrium. Uh, um, tricuspid will be, uh, valve will be as dilated uh, that um, atrium and the, uh, and the ventricle will act as one single cavity. Uh, in that case, uh, there will be uh, well, um, no significant obstacle for the uh, backflow of blood. It will flow directly to the uh, superior and inferior vena cover. Mm, and in the case of well, ventriculization, mm, definitely there will be no uh, significant well, turbulence in that case, uh, and memory will decrease. Uh, that is uh, the PCG, the, the uh, phonocardiogram. Uh, the murmur is relatively soft, mm, uh, 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 very short. Uh, by the way, please pay attention that uh, there are irregular heartbeats. So patient is having well, no P wave, that there is uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, Epstein anomaly as one of the examples uh, of, of um, overload of uh, right atrium of tricuspid regulation will result in something that again uh, is quite predictable in overload of the right uh, atrium at the ECG, there will be tall P wave. Again, uh, if patient will not have atrial fibrillation, otherwise there will be no P wave at all, um, in second standard lead. And uh, um, uh, uh, they'll be disappearing of the second negative phase of P wave in first chest lead. Again, that means that uh, right atrium is uh, well, significantly uh, hypertrophed, enlarged, and, and uh, dilated. For chest X-ray, um, what may be the, the, the basic data? First of all, definitely directly, there should be a dilation of uh, just right atrium and right ventricle. But since we're talking about uh, mostly secondary disease, there may be marked total cardiomegaly and patient may have uh, also dilation of right uh, uh, and left cavities of the heart. Uh, there may be some evidence of elevated right atrial pressure um, that may include distension and therefore more pronounced about shadow of the azogous vein. And sometimes there may be signs of for example, or the fluid in the greater circular circulation like pleural effusion or pericardial effusion. Uh, sometimes patient may have again indirect sign of ascites, that is the elevation of the diaphragm that may be both related to uh, enlarged uh, liver or due to a presence of flatulence and ascites. Again, as a sign of secondary tricuspid issue, secondary uh, tricuspid incompetence, patient may have signs of pulmonic arterial and venous hypertension. Well, uh, talking about stages, um, definitely there will be overload for both uh, um, uh, both right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, it will be volume overload uh, that will result in quite a long time for development of hypertrophy of both cavities. Mm, uh, and later on, there will be uh, dilation first of right atrium and then of right ventricle. 
Uh, in the case of CV ventriculization, there will be extreme uh, dilation of the uh, lumen of the cavity of tricuspid valve, and therefore there will be no significant well, issue, no significant well um, source for development of turbulence or blood flow from ventricle into the atrium. The, uh, the flow will be quite smooth, and uh, that's why in the, uh, those patients uh, there may be even decrease of the turbulent jet of blood and decrease of the murmur during the systole. Good. Uh, tricuspid stenosis. Uh, another disease that we need to discuss. Mm, uh, yes, by the way, I think we uh, uh, we forgot to, to listen to, yes, the, the auscultation. Let's try uh, to play that. It's recording of tricuspid stenosis. What do you think is one? An intensive manner. is in that patient high pitched. Good. Stenosis. Uh, stenosis in patients with uh, um, rheumatic disease definitely will uh, involve mitral valve, sometimes even aortic valve and pulmonic valve. Uh, uh, anyhow, that may be the, the basic cause for development of uh, the, the primary anatomic uh, tricuspid stenosis. Sometimes it may be associated to uh, installation of the pacemaker, sometimes it may be due to congenital lesion, like, uh, like tricuspid atresia. Again, uh, Epstein anomaly may result both in incompetence and stenosis. Uh, and again, carcinoid tumor, because uh, carcinoid tumor is something that will affect well, mostly pulmonic valve, and it will happen then to tricuspid valve, well, it will depend upon uh, well, the severity of the overload of the right ventricle. Uh, um, almost never tricuspid stenosis uh, will be isolated lesion, and if we talk about rheumatic fever, it will be associated to mitral stenosis. Uh, hemodynamically significant tricuspid stenosis will occur in about 5 to 10 percent of patients with mitral stenosis. Mm, uh, and in many cases, stenosis will be associated to some degree of tricuspid regurgitation. Again, uh, if we talk about well, primary affection, mm, about true stenosis, uh, the non rheumatic causes of stenosis are extremely rare. Uh, that is the rheumatic uh, stenosis of tricuspid valve. Um, in contrast to uh, mortal uh, valvular heart disease, there will be almost never affection of the subvalvular apparatus. Uh, but there may be dilation of the annulus fibrosis, and uh, that's why in many patients there will be combination of stenosis to incompetence. Um, so uh, congestion is quite common and combination to regurgitation is also quite typical. Uh, what should be in the history of the patient with uh, a rheumatic tricuspid stenosis? First of all, limitation of the delivery of the blood into lesser circular circulation and from that to left cages of the heart will result in limited cardiac output, progressive fatigue mm -hmm. uh, uh, due to decreased output of left ventricle in the greater circle, uh, on the other hand, uh, there will be congestion in the greater circular circulation. There will be widespread edema, a dependent edema, liver enlargement, ascites, hydrothorax, hydropericardium, uh, and due to liver enlargement, due to congestion in abdominal cavity, there may be anorexia. Uh, patient typically will have uh, a minimal autopnea. Uh, attacks of uh, this knee will be typically at night time the patient will try, to, uh, will try to lie down and that will result in uh, paroxysmal attacks of breathlessness. Uh, clinically obvious rheumatic fever will be present in two-thirds of patients with involvement of joints, with involvement of skin, with the positive tests in serology. As well as for any other causes of rheumatic fever, uh, there will be a female pre uh, preponderance. Uh, well, rheumatic fever uh, more, more, is more common in females and males. Mm, uh, and uh, um, uh, quite rarely, patient will Professor, have. Yes. Um, please, what is anorexia? 
Yes. Uh, what is anorexia or why is the anorexia? Anorexia is uh, decreased or lost appetite. Uh, well, classically, if uh, uh, we will be absolutely correct, um, anorexia itself is absence of appetite. Uh, that uh, is typically of uh, um, central origin, and uh, in that case, you'll uh, rather think about um, tumor, like stomach tumor, pancreatic tumor, or maybe a well, um, uh, situation where there will be uh, intracranial hypertension. But in this case, uh, term anorexia is used is as, as uh, well general <coughs> uh, uh, significance uh, uh, as just will decrease in appetite, mm, and it will be associated to congestion in the system of the portal vein. The point is that uh, uh, inferior vena cava that is drained in uh, right atrium and then into right ventricle, um, inferior vena cava will collect blood. Uh, from uh, the that, that will be the liver. Sorry uh, for drawing like that. Um, and uh, um, inferior vena cover will collect blood from hepatic veins. And if there will be hypertension uh, in the system of inferior vena cover, there will be congestion in the liver. Liver will become enlarged. It will be large. And uh, there are uh, inflow of blood into the liver by the portal system also will be impaired in, in, in those patients. Uh, our portal vein will collect the blood from all digestive organs, from the stomach, from small intestine, from large intestine. And in the case of uh, portal hypertension, secondary to inferior vena caval hypertension, mm, uh, definitely there will be impaired absorption and digestion of food. And the manifestation of that will be decrease in appetite. There will be the well, anorexia or just will decrease appetite. Like that. Good. Well, uh, uh, in these patients, palm redeem hemoptysis will be rare uh, because typically that will be, uh, that will be the, the causes of uh, um, tricuspid regurgitation. Um, tricuspid stenosis should have uh, uh, some independent affection of um, uh, tricuspid development in etiology. So uh, if patient will have a pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary edema, um, uh, will have hemoptysis as again another manifestation of pulmonic hypertension. Um, in that case, you'll rather look, you'll rather think about tricuspid regurgitation. While stenosis means that uh, there, should, there should be some kind of, well, primary anatomical anomaly uh, um, with the cusps of tricuspid valve. What should be the physical findings in those patients? First, again, uh, there may be signs of multivalvular involvement. So if uh, I would talk about tumoric tricuspid stenosis, um, uh, almost by sure your patient should have martial stenosis or maybe uh, martial stenosis and incompetence. Maybe also aortic valvular heart disease, aortic stenosis, aortic incompetence. But martial almost by sure. Uh, um, a permanent uh, um, well, dilated hypertrophed tritium right atrium may be even palpable to the right side of the sternum. So typically when we talk about something that is well, pulsatile uh, to the right, well, laterally right towards or from the sternum, we were talking about right ventricle, but in those patients with tricuspid stenosis, there may be a palpable pulsation of right atrium. Please pay attention that again, we're talking about isolated affection of right atrium. Uh, atrium is hypertrophed, atrium is dilated, uh, right ventricle is normal. And in that case, there should be absence of right ventricular lift, right ventricular pulsation, right ventricular hypertrophy. A uh, patient may have palpable diastolic rumble, uh, similar to that in uh, martial stenosis. Uh, but in that case, it will be at the lower left sternal border, uh, uh, just by uh, the, the sternum itself, not at the apex, uh, as in martial stenosis. Uh, that will be increased uh, uh, in intensity with inspiration, again, in contrast to martial stenosis. Different location uh, by the sternum itself, uh, and clear relation to uh, respiratory phases to be well, definitely gravated at inspiratory phase. A uh, patient may have signs of heart failure like peripheral cyanosis. 
Uh, your patient may have uh, a distension of neck veins, maybe the, the most common, the most obvious finding, because of the digestible uh, elevation of pressure uh, in inferior vena cover, <clears throat> in superior vena cover. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> but uh, sometimes, due to hypertrophy of the left atrium, uh, due to well exaggerated uh, pressure associated the contraction of the right uh, right atrium, uh, there may be permanent A wave. And again, due to that, due to, well, uh, slow emptying, due to block the level of the tricuspid valve, there may be slow or wide descent, slow filling of the uh, right ventricle. Uh, some patients may have uh, fluttering pulsations in the neck. Uh, there may be a right upper quadrant abdominal pain due to, well, dilation of the liver. Uh, distension of the liver capsule, and the uh, uh, patient may have a status along with peripheral edema. Uh, Jugular venous pulse. Mm, first, veins will be distended. Uh, pressure will be extremely high. Uh, giant A wave uh, um, that may even approach the level of the right ventricular systolic pressure. Not because right ventricular pressure is conducted. But because, uh, but because of well, too intensive contraction of the um, right uh, atrium, the right atrium itself, uh, uh, and severe right atrial hypertrophy. The V wave uh, um, uh, typically will be well, uh, uh, either normal or at least well, there will be nothing conspicuous associated to V wave. Mm, unless th there will be concomitant uh, tricuspid uh, regurgitation, and there will be gradual filling of uh, right ventricle, and that's why there will be slow descent. Uh, uh, in patients with uh, uh, sinus rhythm, there may be prominent presystolic pulsation uh, of the enlarged liver. That is the A wave of the jugular vein that will be visible at the uh, patient's liver. So that is, um, well, sometimes may think that somebody is crazy, but not um, the pressure, that the pressure that will be created in the right atrium will be as high, uh, that uh, that may be the, the cause, sorry, uh, for a uh, liver pulsation. Uh, uh, and again, I told you that uh, the V wave may be conducted in patients with stochastic regulation. In that case, it will be the A wave that may be conducted to inferior vena cover and may, may be seen uh, as pulsation of the liver. Again, so uh, that is the normal um, shape of the jugular vein, jugular venous pulse. A wave is contraction of the atrium uh, that is an onset of ventricular contraction, the downslope, uh, feeding uh, of, of, um, of the atrium. Mm, and uh, that is uh, the, the ventricular, uh, the, the end of ventricular contraction, followed by uh, another wide descent. So, in patients with uh, tricuspid stenosis, uh, there will be exaggeration of the A wave and the very slow, very gradual uh, descent after ventricular contraction. Slow passive filling of ventricle. Good. Uh, well, what may be the other findings? First, uh, there may be issues associated to uh, first cardiac sound at the xiphoid process. Uh, there may be splitting of S1. Uh, uh, second, uh, uh, well, that depends what may happen to S2, uh, because, um, well, uh, it will depend upon presence or absence of pulmonic hypertension. Uh, um, sometimes uh, there may be S2, uh, S2. Sometimes it may be single due to inaudible closure of the pulmonic valve because there will be less blood while getting uh, well, uh, into the pulmonic artery um, uh, through the, the pulmonic valve. And as in mortal stenosis, there may be well opening snap. It will be high pitched. Uh, and it will appear uh, somewhat earlier than the, the opening snap in the mitral valve, typically about well, 0.06 uh, uh, seconds after S2, after pulmonic valve closure. And please remember that you should not mix that to mitral valve sounds, because your patient may have both opening snap due to mitral stenosis and opening snap to, uh, due to uh, tricuspid stenosis. Please just try to escultate carefully um, cardiac apex and uh, base of the process. 
Uh, talking about murmurs, murmur typically will be uh, of uh, uh, two phases. Mm, there may be uh, well decrescendo murmur well, after opening snap, and there may be uh, a prehistoric increase of the murmur before next is one. A location is uh, um, a lower left sternal border in third, fourth interspaces. Mm -hmm. It may be heard over the forward process. Uh, quality, it's, it's low pitched, better heard by a stethoscope. Uh, and there may be increase in the murmur during the pre uh, but definitely in patients with first preserved contractility over the uh, right atrium, mm -hmm. and definitely in patients without atrial fibrillation, patients with a uh, normal sinus rhythm. Uh, what to do, which special maneuvers uh, we should use? Uh, well, obviously, inspiration again, as usual. Um, that will increase uh, flow of blood through the, the tricuspid valve. Uh, that will increase the systemic return of the, the, the blood to right atrium. Mm, uh, that will, uh, by the way, uh, increase the drop in right ventricular feeling pressure. And that there may be some other procedures like exercise, like, uh, uh, well, if your patient will receive intravenous fluid, if you inject atropine, again, uh, that will result in mm, increased pressure gradient across uh, the tricuspid valve. Uh, in contrast, a murmur will be reduced uh, during expiration, exhalation. Uh, um, it may be uh, reduced uh, during the strain phase of a salva maneuver. In that case, there will be reduction of the blood flow through uh, tricuspid valve and obviously reduction of the murmur. That is uh, the inspiratory phase, uh, the murmur that is visible here, uh, that is a murmur of uh, um, tricuspid stenosis. And uh, at exhalation, definitely you'll see that uh, the murmur is um, uh, reduced and still it's mostly presystolic. It means that your patient's having preserved uh, 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 contractility over the right atrium. You see P wave for the SNG, and uh, uh, right atrial contractility is quite normal, resulting in significant pressure gradient before ventricular system. Uh, talking about stages, uh, the compensation will be quite early. Uh, hypertrophy may be very significant because, uh, uh, on one hand, it's um, uh, pressure overload but um, uh, pressure will be not as high as in the case of mitral stenosis. Therefore, patient will develop significant hypertrophy of the right, right atrium, but sooner or later there will be definitely dilation of the right uh, atrium, and there will be elevation of pressure in uh, caval veins, in superior vena cava, uh, dilation of uh, jugular veins, and congestion in uh, greater circular circulation with development of uh, ascites, uh, hepatomegaly, and dependent edema. The ECG, quite obvious markers. Uh, there should be some signs of uh, uh, right atrial hypertrophy, uh, tall right atrial P waves, uh, tall in uh, second standard lead, uh, tall without second negative phase in the first chest lead. And this should be definitely, if it's isolated to cuspid stenosis, there should be uh, no signs of right ventricular hypertrophy. If present, then look for tricuspid agitation, look for some other issues, look for pulmonic hypertension that's possible, but it means that it's not isolated tricuspid stenosis. Um, quite frequently, a patient may develop atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Uh, chest uh, X ray will show you dilated right atrium. There should be uh, in as a later case, no enlargement of the shadow or the pulmonic artery. Um, and sometimes, quite rarely, in contrast to, for instance, uh, uh, mitral stenosis, uh, there may be seen presence of calcification of tricuspid valve. As usually, uh, ECOCG, uh, both uh, plain, uh, uh, well, two dimensional, three dimensional ECOCG, will help you to um, verify what will happen to tricuspid valve. Uh, quantify tricuspid stenosis, uh, measure the, the, the orifice of tricuspid valve, uh, measure the, the size of cardiac chambers, uh, and decide whether the patient should go to surgery or should not yet go to, to surgical treatment. Uh, SNG, uh, tall peaked P wave. 
uh, uh, and uh, a permanent upright PV without negative phase in first chest lid. Well, uh, now we have uh, not much time left for pulmonic valve disease. Mm, uh, quite a uh, rare disease if we talk about primary, maybe congenital, maybe again caused by presence of uh, carcinoid tumor of secreting serotonin. Uh, very rare it may be seen in uh, endocarditis. And therefore, most of our patients, when we talk about well, pulmonic valve disease, will have uh, pulmonic disease due to secondary issues. Mm, that will be either uh, just pulmonary hypertension or hypertension with pulmonic artery aneurysm or uh, extremely rarely again, it may be a primary uh, affection of the artery, for instance, in syphilis, uh, in some autoimmune lesions of the artery um, that may happen in, in uh, extremely well, uh, well few patients. Uh, that is uh, the inborn lesion of the uh, pulmonic valve that may result uh, uh, in uh, uh, pulmonic stenosis, um, or sometimes in stenosis both uh, well combined to uh, pulmonic incompetence. That is just well, a chemistural wave with some kind of domain uh, uh, of, of, of cusps uh, and some eccentric orifice. And definitely uh, a patient will have both stenosis because with the orifice is narrow and uh, the, 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 the pulmonic valve will be unable to open properly. So that will be both stenosis and incompetence. Uh, Unicomissural uh, pulmonic valve, mm, a patient will have uh, uh, again, uh, uh, stenosis and incompetence. Mm, that is bicuspid uh, well, with fusion of commissures and uh, uh, just dysplasia, very soft uh, and thickened well, cusps of uh, tricuspid, uh, of pulmonic valve, sorry. Mm, uh, cusps are then in place, but they are well, definitely well, uh, too thick and too soft uh, to shut uh, properly. Uh, what will happen from the point of view of auscultation? First, uh, definitely there will be a uh, change in, in heart sounds. Uh, if we talk about stenosis of aortic valve, there may be decrease uh, in S1 uh, over the xiphoid uh, process. Uh, typically, if patient will have pulmonic stenosis, especially if it will be combined to classification of uh, the cusp of pulmonic valve, there may be ejection click. Uh, um, a patient will develop diamond-shaped pneumonia, significantly softer, significantly of less amplitude than that in aortic stenosis. Mm, location will be typical, it will be second left interspace, sometimes left and third uh, uh, interspaces. Uh, radiation typically absent. If present, it will be towards left shoulder uh, and neck, but typically it's just absent. In severe stenosis, there may be splitting of uh, uh, um, seconds cut sound because of significant delay in uh, uh, pulmonic component. Pulmonic component will be decreased uh, 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 and uh, will develop later than the aortic component. Definitely, the, the uh, inspiration will make that delay much more obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, wide splitting uh, will be associated to well breathing in. And patient well, with pulmonic stenosis also may have a uh, right bundle branch block as another cause for splitting of S2. That is pulmonic stenosis, almost uh, invisible as one, uh, uh, very rough, very, very intensive memory. That is the AOT component that occurs in time. And that is a uh, weak, difficult to, to notice, difficult to, uh, to hear. Uh, but with severe delay, hypomonic component of second heart sound. That is pre-surgical stage. And well, uh, after surgery, you can see that pulmonic sound, pulmonic component of S2 uh, became more, much more prominent and uh, uh, appear much closer to uh, aortic component uh, that indicates um, less pressure in pulmonic artery that indicates success in the surgery of the pulmonic valve. Uh, stages uh, um, stages will include definitely hypertrophy of the right ventricle uh, that will compensate for some time uh, the, the pressure overload, the, the presence of uh, pulmonic stenosis. Uh, uh, and later patient may develop, uh, it's not shown here, uh, hypertrophy 
and deletion of the uh, right atrium right atrium uh, with the hypertrophy in superior and inferior vena cava system uh, what will be the markers of pulmonic valve stenosis definitely the right ventricle will be affected mostly you can see that the huge, uh, well, enormous well, uh, uh, R wave shown here in right chest leads, in V1, in V2. Mm, uh, um, a patient may develop also right axis deviation. Uh, uh, in that case, a uh, patient will have uh, um, sometimes markers of, uh, of overload. Uh, of uh, right ventricle that will be the shift of ST segment and negative T wave that strain pattern here. Okay, see here. The tra transition uh, zone will be shifted somewhere leftwards, and as far as I can mention, it's uh, uh, very close to fifth chest lead. There is domination of positive in the V4, and yes, I think in V5 there is mm, a transitional zone, while normally it should be somewhere in between. V3 and V4. Uh, chest x ray show you, first of all, uh, signs of uh, pulmonic artery hypertension. That is a protrusion of the shadow of the heart uh, that's formed by pulmonic artery. And uh, uh, in some patients, uh, you may see right from the start uh, signs, sorry, of hypertrophy of. Sorry. Yes, uh, uh, of right ventricle, mm, and later on there may be hypertrophy and dilation of the left ventricle. Well, and the last point that we need to mention now um, uh, is that a patient definitely in uh, most of the cases of uh, anatomical affection of the uh, tricuspid and pulmonic valve will have typically multiple valve involvement. Uh, that mostly uh, commonly seen in, in patients with rheumatic fever. Uh, uh, everything will start with the mitral valve. Uh, there may be later on the involvement of the aortic valve, and even later tricuspid pulmonic valve typically will be affected only secondarily. Uh, sometimes it may be seen in patients with dysplasia of connective tissue, so-called myxomatose disease, infection of endocardium. Uh, there will be a very soft aortic valve. There may be a well, soft mitral and tricuspid valve. Uh, and the carditis, uh, that depends actually not upon patient's heart, but upon the source of infection uh, in the patient's body. Uh, if source will be somewhere in oral cavity, uh, if infection will go down uh, uh, in the less circular circulation in the palmitary tissue, and then to the left side of the heart, patient will have uh, uh, aortic valve as uh, uh, most common site of infection. But uh, if patient will have infection of the veins in, in the greater circle, first patient will have affection of the tricuspid valve, maybe um, tricuspid valve, maybe later on pulmonic valve, pulmonic valve. Uh, uh, then infection may go uh, into the lungs. Patient may have uh, lung abscesses. Uh, and later on, uh, if patient will, will survive up to that, there may be affection of uh, left side of the heart. Uh, rarely it may be affected, it may be related to, to intake of drugs, mm, uh, sometimes to the presence of over secretion of hormones. And please believe me that it's really, really a headache uh, for a doctor because the diagnosis of all those neuroendocrine tumors is extremely difficult. Tumor may be extremely small. Uh, and uh, uh, general symptoms may be you know, very inspecific. You have uh, patients with uh, some symptoms uh, that may be very, very look like a uh, carcinoid tumor, but you'll find none. And on the contrary, a uh, patient may have already, already secondaries of carcinoid tumor in the liver and no signs of tumors, uh, uh, um, no, no symptoms. And irradiation. Again, uh, that is a very specific factor. Your patient may re receive a chemotherapy and after that radiation therapy of some brainstall cancers, chest cancers like breast gland, esophageal cancer. Mm, and that may definitely affect uh, um, heart valves. Uh, that may affect aortic, mitral, and tricuspid valve. Well, that is a classical situation of patient's uh, heart in the case of uh, aortic valve stenosis. 
uh, uh, patients having uh, the, the stenosis of the uh, 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 mitral valve, that is tricuspid valve, uh, that is aortic stenosis, mm, and pulmonic valve is, uh, well, well, at least anatomically, is normal. That's typical situation. You see huge uh, left ventricle patient, uh, in that case, will have definitely mm, uh, uh, well, volume overload of left ventricle and left atrium. Both are dilated, both are hypertrophed. There is severe hypertrophy of the right ventricle and uh, uh, left vent uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, right atrium is uh, quite normal. Please pay attention to the displacement of esophagus uh, rightwards, marker of, um, uh, uh, of dilation um, of uh, a patient's, uh, patient's right atrium but uh, I'm not sure about the, the, the shadow of the right atrium, whether it's really dilated or not. So in patients with uh, a combined uh, affection, a uh, patient may have signs of tricuspid stenosis, patient may have mitral stenosis mm, as uh, typical markers of rheumatic fever. Uh, a patient may have uh, signs uh, of superior vena cava, hypertension, uh, uh, typically, there will be no obvious markers of uh, hypertension in pulmonic artery, but it depends. Mm, it depends upon actually the, the, the severity of the mitral stenosis. Uh, 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 and uh, again, pulmonary vascular congestion uh, actually is, is the marker of how severe uh, are the left sided heart valves, uh, valve diseases. On ECOCG, you'll prove actually what's happening uh, in patient's heart. Whether, whether patients have an affection of the tricuspid valve that is primary or secondarily, mm, uh, what is the, the transvalvular pressure gradient. Uh, um, in most of the cases, uh, you'll do just well transthoracic echo CG. Mm, Interesophageal echo CG is, is important, but usually uh, TTE is, is quite enough. Well, uh, uh, that is all for today. Uh, well, um, Disease are quite complicated, uh, but I think we mentioned uh, most of those issues um, at our previous classes. So I hope that it would be easier for you to discuss it today. Uh, uh, if not, uh, the last topic uh, that will be the next Saturday uh, will also will somehow touch the, the tricuspid, mostly tricuspid, maybe also pulmonic available heart disease because we'll talk about myocardial disorders, we'll talk about relative incompetence of mitral valve, relative incompetence of tricuspid valve. Um, however, if you have questions now, today, please uh, uh, ask me and we can discuss, we have some time for that. Well, no questions? Uh, we're able uh, to use my, my link to Google Class uh, uh, mark your, your attendance. How so? Sir, can we have the video, please, the recording of the Yes, session? as usual. Well, uh, after the class, maybe well, today evening, uh, today's night, maybe tomorrow morning, I'll just well, download it to Google Class uh, and we'll attach it to the same, uh, uh, same uh, link as my slides. Thank you so much. So just well before the class, I posted my slides, uh, and I'll add the, the, the video recording to that. Good. Good. If I have no questions, then goodbye. Next class will be, uh, please pay attention, not to this uh, Saturday, by ne but next uh, Wednesday. So we'll, we'll meet once again in a week, and we'll be devoted to systemic hypertension. For today, that's all. Goodbye. All well, good luck. Goodbye, Professor. Bye. Goodbye.